Hey, 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 welcome <laughs> to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I'm playing like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics yet to come. Like to be a guest on the show? Hit me up in the comments. You have a hot topic you like to hear discussed? Also, hit me in the comments. Also, remember that it's free to like, share, and subscribe. I'm also on YouTube. I am also on Spotify. And I'm also on TikTok. On the Wizzo Talk, look me on up. I had to get that in because Josh always reminds me about that. I'm on Instagram too. I'm on Instagram, but I ain't been doing much on Instagram like that too much. So, guys, what we're going to do right now, we're going to meet our guests, which they almost not any guests because they didn't been on Wizzo Talk so much. We're going to let them do their intro. And then we're going to let you guys know about this fire hot topic. Don't go nowhere. I'm trying to told you it's going to be off the chisel. What we got over here? Slice and dice. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's a pleasure to be back on the Right on the Wizzo Talk. Tonight, we're going to bring out the topic of homelessness, as we promised. It was a hot topic, and I was talking with Paul a little bit after, and uh, I think we got to hash it out. All right, all right. So, so we're going to yeah. talk a little bit about the homeless. Okay. What else we going to have over here with you there? Man, you know, I just want to really talk about um, the government and um, how we need to just stop giving them power, bro. Like, we, we really Ooh. feeding everything that we hate. Yes. You know, and we yes. sending our children off to be destroyed for someone else's purpose. I definitely, definitely agree with you. Definitely feel that. So what we're going to do, we're going to let Mr. Slice and Dice start us off. Y'all stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Mr. Slice and Dice over here fixing to give us some numbers and let us talk a little bit about the homeless. All right, guys, we're going to break it down real easy tonight. I got kind of three topics I want to hit on. First of all, involving drug abuse amongst the homeless. Okay. A little bit on the veterans, talking about mental illness as well, kind of the tie-in from there. Talking about the duration of homeless on the street, what classifies as a chronic homeless and, you know, more transient homeless. Okay. And then finally from there, we'll talk about a bit about crime amongst the homeless. All right, let's get it. Let's get so it. we'll see. So we'll start off with drug abuse again. This is just from my independent research. Okay. I found from various sources. One source stated that 38% of homeless, so around almost 50%, are alcohol dependent and 26% are abused drugs. Okay. Two thirds of veteran homeless, so 66%, suffer from alcohol and or drug abuse. Okay. So at a higher dependency. We're talking about the homeless. Veterans. Yep. This homeless is the, that, veterans. Okay. That's veterans. Veterans, veteran homeless are 50% more likely to be homeless also than other Americans as well. So on okay. top of that. And, and just to put a pin in there before you go any further, that can kind of relate back to what you're talking about. Our government sending our kids, I mean, not our kids, sending people off whatever, whatever, and now here he is talking about how the veterans mm -hmm. are homeless. Woo! Come on with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so, so my deal is where I'm trying to go with it is okay. that the, the homeless population suffers obviously from a form of at least how I see a higher dependency on alcohol abuse versus okay. drug abuse. I personally see that as just the cost of acquiring it, right? The cost of getting a bottle of alcohol or a 40, whatever, at like a, your convenience store is $3, okay. right? Gets you cheap alcohol okay. versus a drug or whatever else is going to cost you a bit more and, you know, get your hands on. Right. Um, so I think ease of purchase just for the alcohol is kind of where I'm seeing with that. Um, so you kind of trying to say that the homeless is our drug addicts and drunks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Basically, is what you're saying with the numbers that you got from your independent search from where you got that. The the, exactly. in, the independent search reveals to me that not a majority, but a good portion of homeless do suffer from alcohol or drug abuse for sure. Right, and so. we can probably say that the veterans may suffer from that because we know don't know what they went through mm -hmm. in the military and post the Trump. Uh, yeah, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, post traumatic stress. So that's you know, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PTSD. Yeah. So PTSD. So coming oh, in with ahead. that, so a third of the homeless population, so 33 percent, suffer from ma like serious major amounts of illness such as bipolar, schizo, PTSD, major depressive stuff like that. Okay. So there is obviously a link, as I'm seeing right here, with drug abuse, alcohol abuse mental illness 
and then veterans like you guys are talking about obviously coming home with ptsd and stuff like that right and then getting put out on the streets mm. without a proper resources okay. right yeah. and then left to fend for themselves right. their own devices okay now i know you i know you got some let me say this just right quick uh your first number that you said where it was 30 or 60 some percent of drugs whatever 38 percent abuse alcohol or alcohol abuse dependent alcohol okay yep. so that was on your search now my search through google comes up with one third of homeless people have a drug problem one third from google okay, okay so i broke that down so texas has around twenty seven thousand two hundred twenty nine people that are homeless Okay, yeah. that's a, you know different states vary. So one third of the twenty seven thousand round off, I kind of got like ninety people. You ever right? say yeah? So I think that's a pretty good <laughs> margin right there. But my one third compared to your thirty eight or or sixty eight, but your search was different than my search. Hey guys, so, this is a, this is the thing I was talking about. You know. Paul, prior prior to coming on the show, is that if you guys do any independent research on any topic, you're gonna find a bunch of a different, bunch of different numbers. numbers. Right. Exactly, and, and that's why yeah. I broke mine down to Texas only. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't know if yours covered multiple states or what. Yeah. I broke mine down just to Texas because yeah. I live here in Texas. Yeah, but uh, so that's where I have that one third, and that of that of the twenty seven thousand two hundred twenty nine that's homeless in Texas, and that was as of April thirteen, April of uh, twenty twenty three, I believe. My okay. numbers, but it kind okay. of varies. But uh, let's get uh, my samurai in over here because I know he always has some good Chief words for us. I just want to first put out that, like, I respect that y'all be looking up the numbers, but at the same time, I really don't feel like there is any number that is truly going to represent how many people are actually homeless out there. No. Mm -hmm. They can't count them all. No. And also, mm -hmm. people don't really dive deeper into the source of the of why people are the way they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You see a lot of these veterans that are homeless and they come back and they're abusing substances of any kind. Mm -hmm. It's more than likely because of what they've been through and seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're stressed out. Mm -hmm. And then they come home and then they don't see something too much different than what they've seen overseas. Like, there's a reason why they call it Chicago Chirac and there's so many killings just going all around the nation and just all these shootings and stuff like that. America is a war zone, whether we would like to believe it or not. Um, and it's not something that has just begun, but it stems back to uh, the inception of America. You know what I'm saying? There's always been bloodshed and war on this land, and we try to paint the picture of it not being so, and it always has been, you know what I mean? Right. And the abuse of liquor and alcohol and uh drugs and stuff like that 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 even was happening back in the days you know the story of thanksgiving you know what i'm saying the indians were drugged and they were given alcohol and they were drinking and partying so hard that when their day came to celebrate they were conquered because they were also inebriated i don't know that huh right hey, it's, a, it's a lot of deep yeah. stuff bro there's a yeah. history that people don't know so it's right. like when you look at this yeah. Drugs and alcohol have always been used as a weapon. You know what I'm saying? Always. It's almost like that. a pacifier in a way when it comes to America. And it's so deeply embedded in us that we see it now as a pastime. It's not seen as, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, if the government can monetize it, then it's legal. Mm -hmm. We was only illegal because the government could have monetized it. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, 80, 90 years ago, <laughs> liquor was illegal. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and when they started to be able to monetize that, then it became legal. So we really need to start looking at all this and looking at how it's really being used against all of us. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Our veterans yeah. are just using this to escape a level of reality that most of us can't even perceive. Mm -hmm. they, they've been over there and seen all kinds of stuff, dog. Yeah, we now yeah. have no idea. And I'll just tell you this on the numbers. You know, they, they, they monitor, and I say they, the government, uh, your jobs, different people they always it's always about the numbers now like you said to your point no you'll never get an actual uh, uh, actual count mm -hmm. because just like on applications when it says uh are you black african-american or other or whatever i don't want to answer to that one of the motherfuckers so i put other mm -hmm. so now the count is all messed up yeah. so i agree with you on the account but yeah. for me because i'm about the numbers it has to start somewhere, so, but yeah, it'll never be an accurate count. It just gives so you an idea. It just gives it's you an just idea. It's a rough yeah. idea, but it, yeah. just like yours was 38 or 68, mine yeah. was one third yeah. of Texas, but they still missed. 
a shitload. So I agree with you on all that. Even if you just drive down to Austin, bro, you'll see so many people living under those little yeah. uh, bi-dots or whatever. I don't know what you guys yeah. call them now here, but the underpasses under the highways. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's really... It's uh to me, I mean to a lot of people they would feel like that is depressing, but to me I feel like it's empowering to see those people out there and still because surviving because we think that we need so much to survive and they show us that, that we really don't, don't really need that much yeah. to be free. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's great. And I just touched because I know you got one other thing to say, but I know when you and I was at work and we were talking yeah. and you said something to the fact about how you would be out there panhandling and you would be doing this to doing that to keep from getting a job. And so, I mean, so to get a job, and I just did a little research on that. And as a employer, they're more subject to not hire them because they don't have an address, according to my search. You know, so when you put that fill out the application, you have to put your address. Now, yeah, some of them can lie or whatever. Some mm -hmm. of them maybe they do, but I'm just saying from the research it was saying that's why some of the employers look back. And I want to give him a job because if you clean up a homeless guy, he didn't start out like that. You know, he clean up or she clean up. They clean up real nice, real good. Go get a job, mm -hmm. but maybe don't think to put down their cousin address because we already done a podcast. Sometimes family ain't what the fuck. But anyway, I'm just moaning and moaning. But uh, what you got to say? I was I was gonna hash back on Josh's point. Like actually, I was gonna rewind it even okay. further back how he was talking about how drugs and alcohol have been used to pacify the people for quite some time. And at least within our society now, there seems to be at least I can, I can kind of say there's a high proportion of like escapism that goes on mm -hmm. even like non amongst veterans. I'm saying just in within the population mm -hmm. and it could be as subtle as something like it could be music it could be, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever else, but little things to escape outside base reality and stuff like that. And I think the bigger thing I'm trying to overarch into is like, is humans having respect for their own human, like precious life they have, right? A lot of it comes down to is people just don't respect nor understand the value possibly of their own life. Right, where like, oh man, I'll I'll fall for this. Like I'll I'll you know get drunk. I'll do this, that, whatever. You know, I'll do forms of escapism. Like until it catches up with you and times up, right? And that's it. So I think I see it as at least within our society too is like a lack of respect for like human life in general, like for people on themselves, and then people obviously against people as you talked about with Thanksgiving as well. Right. Not so definitely, bro. Yeah. yeah, people really um we're being trained out here from our school systems and things like that to not really have any type of self-worth. We are only human resources. Mm -hmm. And when we are looked at as a resource in such a way, we never really truly see our potential and the value in ourselves. So we are being taught this to lack that love for ourselves and for our people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I mean, not when I just say our people, I don't mean just a specific race. I mean, humankind in general because we all have this thing that we do where we look at our own people and a lot of us we place blame on our own people or we place blame on other cultures but at the end of the day it's really all of our fault because we share this planet together and until we all get our act together there's nothing that one necessarily one group can do mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right. it's yeah. almost like in the house of representatives or the senate like one person can't go up in there and change that. You know what I'm saying? They expect the president to go in there and change that, but it's so many other people that have to vote mm -hmm. for the president to even yeah. get anything passed. So the society works the same way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Until we all come together, like the same thing with the veteran and the veterans, until we all come together and really show our support for them and show that we value what they what they've done, you know what I'm saying? Really it's not gonna be too much to change. Uh -huh. Uh, stay tuned. We still, you know, we're talking about the homeless. Look at this numbers, different things, different avenues, and uh, and I mean, it's outstanding. There's some fire going on right here. So I know you got some more. I see your book over there. What else we got? We still talking about the homeless. Let's yeah, go. yeah. So we'll hit on the next topic is crime amongst homeless. I didn't pull the data for this, but homeless homeless do experience quite a large proportion of crimes against them too so keep that in mind like they are a target for crime against them as well 
The we number. Find that just a second though. Are we saying that the homeless are committing the crime, or are we saying that? I'll get in. So okay, I, I pulled okay. numbers for that, but okay. the homeless, as I was kind of researching as well, experience a higher proportion of crimes dealt on them. Like you'll see videos of a dude walking up, like shooting a homeless dude, or attacking them, or harassing okay. them, whatever okay. the case. I mean, you see all that type of stuff. So this is from California, where again I was checking with Paul. Forty-eight percent of the homeless population stems from California, 48, it's almost half. It's, yeah, it's crazy. This is from the DA office in California, putting out this number too. So the DA said that homeless are 514 times more likely to commit a felony level crime. From there, 98% of the crime committing homeless already have pre-existing crimes prior to that. So it's not a first time offense, it's a continual deal. So almost all of them have done prior crimes. So my my deal is ask you guys, what do you guys think why the amount of crime is going on amongst homeless? Do you guys think that number is true? Is it skewed or well, what do you guys think? I just say this about the number. We already just talked about how the numbers are skewed. That didn't seem extreme. They, 514 not, is yeah, the extreme. numbers are not always going to be accurate and all that mm -hmm. and i just i've been around the homeless in austin i've been around the homeless in new orleans i've been around the homeless here in texas and i haven't had any trouble with any of them i mean they haven't really they approached me to ask me for this and that i say i don't have it and mostly i think every last one of them have been walked off but that's just me it may yeah. have been some other ones whatever and as far as them committing crime I mean, they may commit some, I don't, I'm just speculating, maybe some petty type shit because they don't have a weapon. They don't have anything. So what do they, they may break in, break in a car and steal something. And how they, they tie those numbers to that homeless person, I don't know. But yeah, I, I just don't have much, much on that. What, what you got right there? Well, man, all I can say is when you feel that you're at the bottom, you feel invisible. And when people feel that you are on the bottom, they treat you as such. So the crimes that are being just passed against these homeless people are because people feel like they're better than them. And they feel like just because these people don't have society's norms or what is said that they should have, they are treated less than human. Mm. When in fact, homeless people are the most free people in the world. They're not governed by the by the whips and chains that other people are governed by. Yeah. You That's true. Yeah. We we are all slaves to this system. We are slaves to this money. We're slaves to these grocery stores. We're slaves to these governments who wants to poison us continually. We're slaves to the medical system that wants to poison us every chance they get. And these homeless people really have an opportunity to show us how to live better. And not only mm -hmm. that, if something was to truly happen to our infrastructure, those would be the people who would survive. Right. I, I agree with you on a lot of that. And the only thing I'll just probably add to that is that, I, and I don't know the numbers, and we already determined that the numbers might not be correct. <laughs> I feel, I feel but uh, I think that some of them have moved on from being homeless mm -hmm. and got back out there to be governed by those whips and chains oh, and stuff like that. You know, definitely. because some yeah. of them, but then, like you say, man, they're free. Yeah. You know, they're out there, they, you know, they have to deal with Mother Nature and stuff like that, but they don't have to punch that clock. They, they, they go to the shelter, they eat a little bit here, they eat a little bit there, but some of them, wants more and some of them are, are, are is content, content with where they are yeah, you know but i don't know we kind of touched on your question or not uh, about the crime but uh what's that i was i was just gonna say like going off of his point was that you know who's to say they're not like the most free people right like you look across the way at another continent right continent south or going west right you're gonna look at people that are homeless, right? Living out amongst the elements. I might not get water today. I might not eat today. I don't know, but right? There's there's a sense of freedom that comes with that. I was I was getting into like an argument with a dude like a while back, and he was like telling me how in Africa they were working, always build these water systems, provide this clean water and stuff like that, and make their lives easier. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, and he's like, it'll make them happier. And I was like, how do you know that? that they might be very happy right now. You know what I mean? They might not want any, you know, yeah. people going in, touching their system or doing anything with it, right? Because that's when issues start to happen. Now we'll put chlorine and fluoride in the water. Exactly. We're helping you though. The teeth are clean, right? But now we're going to put the chemicals in the water for you. And that's what made it even weirder because fluoride really weakens the bones. <laughs> And then, and, and the bounce off what you were saying, because you're completely <laughs> accurate with everything you were saying. The thing is this, man, for thousands upon thousands of years, our people have survived, right? And I mean humanity in general has survived with any without any of this modern day bullshit. Mm-hmm. So I remember at one point when I was when I was young, I would see so many movies and they would be talking about how young people were so liberated. Because they would drop everything, pick up a backpack, and hit the road yeah, with yeah. nothing but a backpack. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking yeah. about thumb out on the road, hitchhiking, yeah. backpacking, and that was a, a was an American dream, bro. That's how you live the dream you saw yeah. in the world. So at what point did we start feeling like, oh man, I can't get water because it's gonna come out of a pipe? When our ancestors were like, okay, it's gonna rain, let me set something up. Oh, okay, yeah. I can smell the moisture in the air. I know where the fresh water is. Or, hmm, let me follow the animals. They're going to lead you to the water. Yeah. Our ancestors have had technology that was in tune with the planet and the knowledge to know how to get these resources before man ever came along with any pipes. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So to go on with yeah. what you were saying about Africa, why do they need those pipes? Yeah. Bro, it's plenty of plants in Africa like we have here in the deserts. Cactus hold water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different plants in Africa where they can go and they can tap into it and get water, bro. They can follow the animals. So it's like, at what point do we feel like we're entitled to the government's help when we know the government is trying to destroy us? Right. I, I think, think, man, they, they just, just going, going over there trying to be Captain Sam and do something. something. Like you yeah. were saying, and then yeah. there goes the chemicals. Because we also have a podcast coming up pretty soon <laughs> about all of the shit that's in the food. Yeah. The chemicals and stuff like that, but just trying to stay focused because y'all was talking about the homeless and uh, just different things, giving out some different numbers. Uh, you have a couple more over there, or what else you got? So, ne- next one or final one to flow into is the duration of homeless and what classifies a chronic homeless. So, mm-hmm. per the definition of homelessness, is any person that is not in a permanent form of residence. So you see somebody vlogging out of a car, they're considered homeless, right? Mm -hmm. Same as how they view somebody sleeping on the bench. So important to keep this in mind when they're pulling the numbers. I know when we think of homelessness, chronic people out there for months, years out in the streets. Majority of these studies are pulling from he was in his car, she was in his car, she was sleeping at a shelter, whatever the case. So varying ranges of extremes, right? So... From this, majority of homeless are only homeless for one to two days. Mm. Per, per the source, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, I, okay. That was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, this, this is from, actually I wrote down the source actually, the foundation for homelessness.com. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> seems legit, right? Um, and then half who answered the homeless shelter leave within 30 days Mm -hmm. so they get out pretty quick and then from there chronic homeless again per this source so about 112,000 people are chronically homeless in the u.s in the u.s again we kind of put numbers into perspective has 360 million people Mm -hmm. right that's 112,000 right Right. so still a large sum of people nonetheless but these are people that are out there for more than one or more years Okay. Well, I heard a lot of numbers that y'all saw just come up and just ask oh, one thing right quick. Uh, so you gave out a lot of numbers and a lot of information. So in your opinion, where or how can any of that be fixed, the homeless, or can it be, or should it be, or I mean, or, or what? what? What do you think? What do you think is some examples of how we can fix that? Or if it can be, or I mean, this may be something where some of them don't want to be like over there for how they go over there. I was, I was about to just hit on these two points that just came to mind. Okay. So, so I think, I think the way to tackle it is a societal problem at large, like even outside the homeless. Like people are suffering with mental illness at higher rates, people are abusing drugs at higher rates, right? People are, you know, committing suicide, whatever the case is. 
there's definitely like, there's definite societal problem going on like even outside homeless like it's it's stretched amongst everybody just again from another source i pulled from 60 percent of chronic homeless experienced lifetime mental health con like conditions leading into that right so there was a pre-existing deal that led them there and then 80 percent of chronic homeless experienced lifetime drug or alcohol problems yeah Right, yeah, so we, we can kind of, yeah. I mean, like what Josh was saying a while ago. I mean, shit, they free. So yeah. some of them out there. Uh, I mean, I don't mm -hmm. feel that they're, and this is just my personal <laughs> that they're drug addicts or they're um, wanting to buy drugs or alcohol. Which I mean, the veterans maybe yes. I mean, because we don't know what they've been through. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So they they may need that drink sometime, but. The thing is, they out there raising money, getting money, or doing whatever. I just don't really see those numbers with them doing drugs and being on alcohol because they're not getting enough money from people to go with that. But that's just my thing. The, so I, I brought those points up is that it, those were the like reasons driving them out to right. be homeless, right? They carried with them, like they had a life before the streets had mental health problems, right? That did not get addressed, that were serious, that led okay. it to homeless, right? Contributed to that. And then 80% of them having alcohol or drug addiction problems leading out into the streets, right? And stuff like that. So the, the point I was trying to get to is that we need to address those deals, right? There needs to be a center focus on that, of fixing the addiction problems that are going on amongst the society, the loneliness amongst the society, whatever the case is, it's definite widespread. You know, whether, you know, social media going on amongst the young population or American population just being overworked, whatever the case is, right? Running a rat race for nothing, you know, it's like that, that problem needs to be fixed. People need to be given like a purpose, right? And need to have a bigger image to be working towards. Okay. Well, that's some good numbers right there, Josh. I'm going to put out a couple of words on that homeless because then we go on what you got. We're not trying to uh, solve anything tonight. We're just bringing up some discussion. Shopping. We're talking about the homeless. Uh, just got some numbers <laughs> coming out, but uh, what, you, what you got to tell them or you want to go hit him with something else? Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to dive in it. Um, right. First, I want to I want to start off by saying that um, the drug and any type of substance abuse problem stems from a lack of freedom. These are the escapes that we use because society and society's normalities and norms are actually the problem. We are not designed to live like how we are living and it's not balanced. We all craving something more because we all shouldn't be working 65, 75 years to not have nothing yeah, to show. I that. This is not a balanced life that we should be living because we are not free. And if, and if anybody out there who's watching this cannot see this, you too are suffering from a form of mental illness. We all have some level of mental illness because of today's society. Because we know deep down in our soul we're not living how we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. We're just a cog in this wheel of normality. And who claims what normality is? Mm -hmm. We're all given this image that we live. You know what I'm saying? Just like the whole image of homelessness you know what i'm saying the old saying is home is where the heart is when you look at that picture that you got on your wall of these mountains and this beautiful water you know what i mean mm -hmm. a person who's living there would you call them homeless even if they didn't have a cabin and they just lived on the side of the water would you call them homeless right no because we all were born on this planet this planet is our home no one is truly homeless you know what i mean before we formed these societies that we lived in we all all our ancestors were quote unquote homeless, mm -hmm. but who says what homeless is? Yet again, we're allowing our enemies to tell us what we are. They call it homeless and they shun this because people don't want to live in their image. Mm -hmm. We, we want to be free. And those who want to be free will make that choice to truly break outside of that matrix. So these people are not homeless because they were born on earth. Earth is going to provide. Mother Earth always provides. So, we have to really get out of calling them homeless and really get back to seeing them as the ones we should look up to and them leading the way. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like I say, when all this shit is gone and the system crashes and this shit burns, where are we all? We're not all not going to be homeless because we are on our home. We were born here. Mm -hmm. 
It was good, yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that's some straight fire shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't that's say anything about it. That's some that straight fire right shit right there. It makes sense, especially like looking at this picture. Hell, I see some canoes and stuff right there, exactly, right now. They live it's a frontier, man. Yeah. Back in the day when they didn't yeah. have homes, people were building this out of those trees that you see there. Right. They were going out there fishing. Yeah. They were living. Right. We didn't need these brick structures and all this other mm -hmm. stuff to survive. We didn't need cars, debit cards, and all this bullshit. Nah. You know that's, what I mean? that's a way for them to go on, for the rich to keep on getting richer and, yeah, and keep we, fucking the planet up. If, and then ooh. we continually have to pay for it. And then if we don't pay for it, our children and grandchildren are definitely going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, it's time for a commercial break. Woo, some fire. Everybody, y'all tuned in to Wizzo Talk. We do some straight fire right here. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. It's absolutely free. So, uh, I forgot what the hell else I was going to say because I'm still pumped up from that that you gave us. I can't even finish my damn commercial. But anyway, so guys, good. we were talking about the homeless and just a whole bunch of fire stuff. So if you if you get a chance, rewind it, go back and listen to it again and again because my man Josh put out some fire shit. Mr. Slice and Dice, I call him over here, Ryan. So <laughs> I don't know that's kind of just stuck to it now or some shit, but... Hey, it's just some fire conversation, fire topic. But I know you got something else you wanted to touch on also, so let's hit on that and then we'll uh, come on that. Cause you about through with your, with your notes and everything. But I will say this, yeah. guys, y'all always hear me say, if you have a hot topic you'd like here to discuss, you know, hit me up in the comments. If you like to be on the show, hit me up in the comments. And that's exactly what you did. You know, that's exactly what Dice here did. You know, he hit me up, he said, what's on, let's talk about Blase Blase. I like shit. We make it happen. No, for real. And I don't even have to worry about my man here, Josh, because he's yeah, I he jumping the messages and you talk about it. He in the minute, and we gonna get, we gonna set it off, and I'm gonna come with some numbers. And Josh just got all that shit memorized. I can't, I can't do it. But uh, anyway, guys, we was talking about that. I just want to thank them guys for that. So my saying to you, if anyone out there have a hot topic you like to discuss, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what it is. And uh, if you don't want to be on the show. Let me know what it is. I get these guys together or something, and we'll set it off. Damn. Come on with it, bro. Man, you know, I think you know, we really need to just touch on um, the government and really um, their machine that they're pushing uh, as far as war and how we really are gasoline for set war. You know, we cry a lot and say that we don't want destruction and we want peace, but when other countries look at us, they don't see that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody here knows that we don't agree with what our government does. But when we're sending weapons and stuff to Germany and they're using those weapons on Russia and stuff like that, right. the Russian government doesn't see that we don't agree with our country. They just see that we're paying them tax money. And that our tax money is funding all of this. They see that we're providing our children to fight in these wars and kill Russians. And we cry that we don't want wars when we're giving the people everything they need to to fund these wars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like China, at one point they said they were going after Taiwan, and they had no hesitation with sending a million troops to destroy these people. Right. And and when I hear that, the only thing I hear is that's a million people's sons and daughters going to die. Mm -hmm. But for what though? Because we don't if we we don't agree with what they're doing. Why are we sending our the people that we cherish the most so to sacrifice so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, right here in uh, 2023, uh, cause I don't know when someone might watch this later on down the line or something like that, you know, that is the only thing that the, well right now we're off in this government shutdown. Mm -hmm. The Dems came to agree against this, Republicans can't, they can't, but let it be a war. If it's a war or something doing with a war, they got bipartisanship right out the door. I mean, because they come together with that because now they're ready to go because now they know they can make some money. Mm -hmm. You know, they can make some money. They can go over there and destroy this and that. Now all these other contractors, they get these big old bids to go over there and go and rebuild this so there's more money coming back in. So they'll, they'll agree on on a war, but they're not going to hardly agree on because anything else. Money. Yeah, every, they, they always agree on a war every time. And that's why they push it so hard for World Wars, because yeah. the first two World Wars were so, but they brought in so much money, Rockefellers and all them, and they yeah. were, and they were feeding weapons to both sides. Yeah, yeah. You know they, 
I, I think they'll uh, push it more. You may have some that'll push it back, but I'm going to see what Slice and Dice got over here because he kind of quiet. He's over there grinning like a red eating cheese. What's he got over there? You know, I'm just I'm just taking it all in. See, uh, now, that's a safe answer. So I'm letting y'all right know right now. Whenever he says something like that, he's playing it safe because he don't want to go and give out the right opinion. Now, you catch my mind, my man over here, Mr. Samurai, he don't give a fuck. He don't go and tell you. I'm going to tell you like that shit is. I'm going to tell the people how it is. I'm going to tell you how it is. There was a point when I was younger when I wanted to fight in the war machine. Okay. Right. There's a, I feel like a majority of young men, especially athletes that play the sport, whatever else, is very appealing to run with a gun and jump and dive and jump out of a helicopter and swim underwater and all this cool stuff. That's how it's appealed is the adventure, right? Mm. As you get older, as Josh is talking about now, you look at it as not just you as the individual with the gun, but as the entire war machine as a whole. Okay. Why is it running? It needs money. Why do we want war? More money, right? I.e. you put a country in debt, we'll lend you the firearms and weapons, explosives, all that stuff. You guys pay us for the next 50, 100 years. Right, in an agreement right. and interest on top too. It's all about money at the end of the day. So like once you look at it like that, it's hard to commit, right? Because the, at least for me growing up was, the US was always on the right side. Whatever the US is doing, it's the right thing to do, right? It's almost like, it, like God's will in a way, like it, you're not doing the wrong thing ever. But like I'm saying, the more I've gotten older, the more I look at it as like senseless, and stupid young guys signing up to get killed and die for the war machine which is crazy right so now that's what i'm fucking talking about bring that <laughs> shit out there god damn you try to hold back over here my thing is do you do you know why when we were younger we were so hell bent on wanting to fight wars and be warriors because that's what they fed us, bro. Mm -hmm. As children, they feed girls to be mothers. They give them baby dolls. As boys, right, what do they do to us? They give us G.I. Joes. Call of Duty. Right. And they give us that, and they make us feel like we doing this, it's going to make us a man. Mm -hmm. Us killing somebody else is going to make us a warrior. That, bro, it, 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 you become more of a warrior by saving a life than you ever do by taking one. It takes more strength to have compassion than to heal than it does to take a life. Anybody can kill. Yeah. Only yeah. a few people can make life, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's you true. really have to look at that and look how we have been programmed. Why did we feel so obligated to want to fight for this country? Is it because every day of your life where you were in school, they made you say the Pledge of Allegiance? But who are you pledging your allegiance mm -hmm. to? Right. You have to look at what you're doing and we have to look at how we're being programmed continuously throughout our lives. And the reason why we get older and we start to think outside of ourselves of being these warriors and we become a warrior for our own tribes and our own families is because we then get to see that we are sending our babies out to be destroyed. But for what though? For somebody else's money. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, the school system in the prison, in the military, same thing. They all get paid off attendance. The more people they got there, the more money they gonna get. And when you start to look at these type of numbers and you start to see who getting paid off of it, you start to see a bigger picture. And that's what we have to start to understand that our presence means so much more than we realize in all of this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Some big shit. What you got over there? I hear you. I hear you thinking. I hear the wind turning. I hear too. <laughs> you know, Josh always just blows me away with this stuff, man. So yeah. Um, but uh, again, not, nothing. Nothing against. Like I'm sure, as we all three can agree across the board, nothing against the guys that do serve this country. No, definitely. That definitely are not. that are veterans, right? That have made that sacrifice. Yeah. Whatever you yeah. guys are the, the heroes in your own sense, right, for serving your brothers, if anything, right? At the end of the day, yeah. you talk to these guys, it's like, well, why are you doing it? When it comes down to it's the guys next to you, right, or the women right. next to whoever the case is, right? right? So, you know, I I think it's important for people to, as they get older, as quick as you can, manage to gain this awareness 
into what you're really doing. Exactly. Right? Like, why are you wanting to join a war? Like, a war is just not some fairy tale adventure, right? On a helicopter and an airplane, like the movies play it out, and everybody ends up okay. The reality is, like, you come back with either with a mental illness or you're disabled physically, right? A majority. All right. And then you're coming back either with, you know, friends you lost, whatever the case is, and you got to live with that. And For the, what? Right. And the only thing I kind of say on that is when you were that 18 year old kid, you're not thinking about that. Of course not. You know, you know, right. You, you're already programmed, kind of yeah. like we were saying a while ago, from them giving us the call of duty now. You know, back then it wasn't the Call of Duty, it was the little the little army yeah, man and shit like that that I played with or whatever like T shirts. Right. Yeah, all that. So now, you know, they're making it look all this and their recruiters and, and I'm I'm not a veteran, so I don't know. I'm just kinda of going by just talking. You know, and that event that that uh, recruiter would make it sound all, you know, mm-hmm. cloud be gory and all that stuff like that. You get to travel, you get to see the world, uh, but then you come back with loss of limbs and now look at the veteran homeless number that you gave us while ago or all the veterans that's homeless. But when they say, We're gonna take care of you, we got you. That's some fucking bullshit. They didn't wanna pay the guys for the chemicals over there with the burn pits. Yeah. They finally did, and that was some of the Republicans that was right here in Texas that ain't never even been to war, mm-hmm. you know. But we're not gonna get on it. But I'm just saying, just to touch base on that's why, as you as that young kid, because I myself back then wanted to go in the military, and some of them look at it as, as a way out, you know. They, you know, they're not doing nothing, they don't know what they want to do, so they say, Go in the army, be all you can be. If that's the slogan, now I don't know. So, but I'm just saying, as that 17, 18 year old kid, they in ROTC, maybe or whatever, not, and they're not thinking about the after and the long term effects. They're thinking about now, they're thinking about, hey, I'm going in there, I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm going to see the world and have sex with a whole bunch of women. I just paint that. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of think about paying for school and stuff too, though. School, but yeah. These are they all the things free. that they're using into your psyche, bro, to yeah. get you and manipulate you into doing what they inevitably want you to do. You know, uh, today's time isn't like in the older days when people went to war. The king was the first one out into the battlefield. Yeah. Now, you won't see no president going into no war, even if they are the general of the army. They're not going no. down with the ship, dog. No. So we yeah. have to look at that as well. And there's so much stuff that we're not paying attention to. Yeah. yeah. Like my man over yeah. the like said, man, you know, not to downplay anybody's experiences no. in the military or anything no. like that, but at the same time, you have to look at what you've done. What did you sacrifice? What did you do it for? You feel like you did it for your country, but your country doesn't appreciate nor love you. So you really did it for money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I really don't want to come off like that, like an asshole. But, you know, it, it really boils down to that, man. Everything that a lot of those soldiers have fought for, even if they feel like it was for our freedom, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because if it was truly for our freedom, they would be fighting big corporations right. and not fighting other poor people. When they go over into these other countries, they're not fighting rich people. They're fighting poor people. Like, they would be over here fighting their own relatives. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. is ultimately what we have to look at. Who are they riding around shooting at? When you see them people in Iraq and you talk to a lot of those soldiers who were in Iraq and they were saying that they were getting bonuses and things like that to shoot at people. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Say that they were bombers and shoot children and stuff like that. Bro, who is that serving? That's not serving us. We, you have to literally look at what's going on. We live in a country that treats its people like shit and then say it's going to war and sending our children and our fathers and our grandfathers over to kill people who are trying to just protect their children like what we trying to do, bro. You're not killing the rich people. You're not killing the people who are making these laws. You're not killing the terrorist people. You know what I'm saying? Bro, they ain't cahoots with all these people. They said they were going over to kill Osama bin Laden, but George Bush and them were just doing business with the fucker. Uh, yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? Come on, man. Yeah. Omar yeah. Gaddafi, he was helping people in his country. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Newly wedded families was getting, Omar Gaddafi, when people were getting married, the young folk get married, he would give them land, free schooling. That was already a given, though, free schooling. Mm. He gave them free land, 
electricity, you know what I'm saying? And he helped them get their farms together on top of provide, providing water for people in Africa who did not have it. And he did all this for free. And they said he was mistreating his people. Mm. Flip the script and you look at America who don't give a fuck about their batteries, killing our young kids, you know what I'm saying? And, and putting guns in young kids' hands, putting drugs in our own communities. Yeah. Who the fuck fighting for us, man? We sending fuckers over here to go kill other motherfuckers for trespassing against their own people. And if you truly want to be a soldier for this country, you need to be in these streets protecting your communities. That's what a real soldier is. Fuck going overseas, man. Because them people ain't fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? Who protecting us here? You going over there doing all that other bullshit when you should be in your own communities governing that, making sure all this shit is good, protecting our women and our children from the bullshit. Because if you was here being a man or being a woman, giving the community what it needs, we wouldn't even have to fucking even think about no gang violence. Because all them kids is doing is looking for other people to look up to. Yeah. The children and grown people body looking for other grown motherfuckers to look up to. That's why you see all these grown boys following each other with their pants around their ass. They really looking for the men and each other to guide each other, but ain't no men there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's that's deep. That's fire. And I think the only reason why they're going is because the one, when they enlisted, that's their job. And then the rich people is sending them over there mm -hmm. to mess with and kill, yeah, kill these poor to, people. To so do the shit so. for them, they're doing yeah, their they're bit. Do. These yeah. motherfuckers are like high paid henchmen. Yeah. 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 The Congress, the senators, all them guys, which I've done a podcast on that, and we got more to come on that because mm -hmm. that's another. That's a whole other topic. When they, when they apply the drafts, I guarantee you these senators, uh, mayors, all these elect, elect, what do you call them, electorians or whatever they are, yeah. all these people not putting their kids in. Oh, I don't give a fuck if they got one son, no, they not no, going. No, no, so no. why you got to go? No. It's, the same, it's the same thing with the vaccines. These mm -hmm. motherfuckers are over here faking getting vaccines and shit while motherfuckers just pumping their shit into their veins, dog. Yeah. And now motherfuckers going to jail for it. <laughs> Because they finally found out these people was faking. Like, we couldn't tell it was faking on TV. Mm. Yeah, that's some shit. That vaccine, they didn't get ready to start this shit up again. So. And people know, they know yeah. the bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah. This is a perfect opportunity to crash this fucking system. We didn't had it before. We, we truly want our freedom. We can all stand up together. We do not need these hospitals. We don't need these schools. Mm -hmm. Mother, if the doctors was really doing this shit to heal people, they'd be in the streets killing motherfuckers like Jesus was for the free. Damn. I had to, if I could, I'd drop my mic on that right there, but then I wouldn't even hear it. <laughs> That's some straight goddamn fire. But this is nice, slice and nice. You kind of quiet over there, man. Just grit. When you look at the click that on the camera, what's up? You agree, disagree, or just want to leave it like that? You got anything you want to throw out there? Nah, I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> of course I agree, man. I mean, I was. It just hit off a ten hit, ten minute hit, man. Everything was on point. I was like, couldn't disagree with anything, man. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You know, the thing, the thing I will say is, you know, these these guys are not doing it for the money. They're not getting paid really anything. I think your E one grunt, right, coming out of private, is like getting paid twenty thousand something. It's something oh, yeah. ridiculously yeah, low. I, I mean, it's not for the money. Yeah. Right. One of the people working at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're not. You're not per se getting paid that well to sacrifice your life. True. Right. And, and then, like I was crazy. saying, on that, yeah, they probably not think about that, but then they sell them also on the school or yeah. all these other benefits. It's been free medical, yeah. and, and you get to travel, you get to do the work at McDonald's, you don't get to do that. At work at McDonald's, why can I take your order? That's all you got, flip some free fried burgers. But I think they selling them on, and I'm not a veteran, I've never been in, I'm just kind of speaking on what. As a 17 year old kid, 18 year old kid is not thinking as we are right now as yeah. adults. The, the commercials I just seen recently, I just saw for Air Force and Marines I've seen recently, is it's presented as, again, as we see it, is what do they use us for? Mm. But the commercial, how I got presented, was you could be a pilot, you could be a mechanic. Mm -hmm. We need people that do this. You're your best version. Find your best version through us. Mm -hmm. Find your potential, right? Your quote unquote potential 
through our organization, like, again, feeding to young, naive people that had, like you guys were talking about, might not have any other choice to do, want to get out, need to figure something out. Right. They don't have a choice, right? And they're like, well, the Air Force or Army or military, whatever, whatever branch told me that they're the only way I can achieve my full potential. I can't do it any other way. Right. That's the only way, right? So they get you trapped in with that. I heard that. Let me uh, talk for one commercial break right quick. Thanks, it's commercial. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the commercial break. Just hit a absolute ridiculous riff right here with these guys. Again, guys, as we always talk about, it's easy to like, subscribe, click and follow, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Don't be shy, man. Tell them about the Wizzo Talk. We're doing crazy topics in here. And as always, it's a pleasure joining these guys. And yeah. Fire conversation. <laughs> I hope you don't think I'm paid for that shit. That was fire, bro. That was fire. God damn, that was fire. Shit. Bring it on this up here, John. What we got? What we got? What we got? Man, it's just. <laughs> that was fire. It's just, oh. man. We really, we really need to get our, our minds together, man. And like you were saying, like it's really about all that stuff is about status, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's that's what's wrong with the planet, man. Everybody wants to be better than somebody else. We really need to step away from the status and start stepping more so into community. You yeah. know what I mean? And we stepped away from that. And I knew we stepped away from that when I was a shorty when we started calling our neighborhoods hoods. When we yeah. took the neighbor out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, coming from Chicago and yeah. coming here, it's the neighborly energy is more but it is almost like they idolize being like a big city down here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When they have so much more to gain from being the small town that it is. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. man, we just need to get back into knowing our neighbors. You know, my grandma knew the people four blocks over, man, four yeah. blocks down. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I did anything down the street, they knew. They were like, I'm to your grandma. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? You're running yeah. home with her. Let me not get in trouble. <laughs> right. And yeah. our kids exactly. don't have that type of structure yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? We let the police handle everything. <sighs> and we really need to stop letting these agents of chaos like uh, really govern things so they can start to remember that they are us as well. Right. We are not our jobs. Um, we are human beings. And we are here to love each other, whether we believe it or not. Right. right. Straight, Straight fire. fire. You know, I, I think, think that the, uh, the times are kind of changing. And so my parents were like that, where we knew everybody in the neighborhood, we knew this. We were out and about. Some of the kids now are in because they're thumbers and they're not doing anything. And now some of the kids, you can't even say anything too because the parents is getting upset. You know, getting, don't you say that, that's my damn kid, don't listen to that. You know, when that kid needs to act right sometimes because you sitting in there doing whatever, and so somebody else has eyes on him or her, seeing what's going on. So, you know, we can't really, you know. The parents need to act right too. Exactly, you know, and, and you know, and, and want some of that help when going on. But I tell you, man, the times are changing, and uh, some of the old days and old time ways are really missed. Yeah. You know, they need to come they, back. They, they really miss it. It'd be nice if they could come back. They can, yeah. They can, but people have to be in a, in, a, in a point of suffering in order for them to come back because we've become so empowered by the illusion of our technology. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take for the system to crash for us to truly see that we have to be here for each other. Because it's so amazing, like... You on the internet and you see people talking shit about each other so much yeah. and then you can turn the page or flip it to another video and, and see people coming together to save a dog from a swollen river you yeah. know what i'm saying a tsunami or yeah. seeing people say seeing people come together who would never have come together to save a beach dolphin i just saw like some black people and some mexican people and some white people save a fucking shark that was beached i would never say that i would have shot that motherfucker in the head and ate it but you know, hey man, they say that shark was trying to eat the shit out of the air, but they trying to throw it in the water, shark trying to take a plug out of it. Yeah. And I'm like, well yeah. damn, they working together. <laughs> and it's like, bro, we can come together for things like that. We really yeah. should be able to come together for our children. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Just to touch base back over here with you again. So did we kind of cover uh some of the homeless topics that you kind of wanted to get out, some of the numbers you wanted everybody out there to know about, you know. Yeah, as always, guys, like Again, when dealing with these numbers, this gives an idea of like what's going on. Um, for me, again, I don't, 
side one way or another derogatory against homelessness again i think josh brought up a great point too is that homelessness the connotation of the word is negative right you you lack a home you need a home right and you need a loan from the bank and we need you to bank payments on it for 30 years right and then you're free and you still don't own a home yeah no you don't yeah, you still get taxed on your land or yeah. property yeah. yeah right so yeah. yeah exactly you're never fully free with it right so um sure. but yeah i mean i think you know we brought up a lot of great points with homelessness and stuff like that and mm -hmm. um again like what i would talk about is ways to look at fixing the problem right and what we can do you right. know at least what i'm sure as josh can agree to is just be out taking care of the people in your community man yeah. look out for the people restore the neighbor and neighborhood right in many ways the yeah. homeless people stick together more than the people with the houses yeah, they, yeah. Know what I'm they make sure they take care of each other i've yeah. seen plenty of documentaries with the homeless people it'd be one guy or two and they'll wake all the other homeless people up like oh let's all get together go get some food or if they however much money they make a day uh doing whatever they do to get money they'll bring their money together and get food yeah we do not do this as people who have houses because we're so entitled mm -hmm. and that takes away the uh culture of actually having a system where it takes a village to raise a child type of mentality mm -hmm. you know what i mean right that, that is when you say that village it just kind of make me think that homeless village is tight yeah those guys they're sticking yeah. together mm -hmm. and i say god but it's ladies out there also too yeah. you know just figure of speech like that and they're tight and they stick together that village is helping one another because they're sharing Mm -hmm. Their water and their food, they 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 pennies and nickels, they dimes, what one they raised, and I think in Austin and certain other titty titties. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn! <laughs> I said that. Slip. What am I thinking about? <laughs> titties. <laughs> what time is it? I, 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 I feel like. I, I feel like that going on with it too, though. Because yeah. you think about titties, titties, they feed, they feed you, true. man. So the first food of life, dog. You know what I'm saying? That's nurturing. Right. But what I was meaning to say was cities. And I said titties. So, well, what the hell? But, you know, different cities is working on different projects I've seen like that. But and still, I have to ask, you know, you know, we don't want to be like the ones that's going over there. Some of them may not want it. Some of them might want to be free yeah. in this picture that's on this wall mm -hmm. and not have to punch that clock and not have to do that and happy and content with what the way they live it. But now we can all agree that it's some out there that's not. Mm -hmm. That it's some that wants to get back off into this debt and this, you know, forever ending uh, mess as a... It's so funny you say that because I don't know if you guys have ever watched The Matrix, which I'm sure you all have. Yeah, but you know, not really watched it. It, it reminds me of that one part in The Matrix when the guy had made the deal with the agents. And he was sitting at the table eating the steak. Right. He was telling him that I know this steak isn't real. And it's right. just messages sent through the neurons of my brain telling me that this, this steak is juicy and tasty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he yeah. was like, I still want it. Yeah, exactly. That's how it is when these people are homeless. Even if they don't truly see their freedom and they want to be integrated back into society, they know that society isn't real and it's stressful and they truly live free because they don't have anything to tie them down. Nothing. But when you want to go back into that, what is it really about? It's about status. Yeah. It's about you wanting to be seen again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And your true power is actually in being invisible, especially in today's time when you have cameras on every damn thing. Yeah, cameras on everything. Just uh, on another quick note, because Mr. Slice and Dice asked me to ask you to wear, and I know he's dying to hear it because he didn't watch the other video when you talked about it. So if you don't mind, just let them know why and the listeners that maybe didn't watch it from the last time. Well, um, I wear this because of my bloodline and on my father's side of the family, um, my grand for my grandfather, he's Jamaican, right? but they are actually native americans as well and they well my people come from choctaw on that side and on my mother's side they are uh creek muskogee you know what i'm saying so i got a, I got a rich heritage in the indigenous american game though but most people don't realize that they do have it because being black is not a culture and 99% of the people who were labeled black actually were Native Americans. 
they just label them as black because when you label them as black, then you can take away their culture, their titles, and you can take their land. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we get back to this and start to understand our cultures, understand that a lot of our gangs or quote unquote, what we like to call gangs, they have dances for a reason. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of these are tribal things that we lost contact with, but we never lost in contact with them when it comes to our spiritual essence. That's why black people dance so much. You see the little girls out there making dance teams and the right. boys out there dancing. In Chicago, we have something called footworking. You know what I mean? And it's all tribal dancing, but we don't think about it like that though. Mm -hmm. We think it's something that we just come up with when really it's something that's inside of us. You know what I mean? Right. Straight fire. So believe it, whether you know it or not, you, you, bro, you might be Native American too. You just got to find your tribe. You know what I'm saying? For your bloodline. I just think it's badass, man. Like, it just sucks. <laughs> and it's also known as a war bond. Yeah, I was say, it, look, it, yeah, just, yeah. it looks badass, man. Yeah. yeah. It's right. it's really cool. Well, right. right. there you go. So, yeah. we've been chopping it up for about an hour. You know, I only like to run with and talk about an hour. Yeah. So, uh, go and close us on that with whatever you got. Guys, as always, absolute pleasure to be on these guys, man. I, I can't say it enough, man. Don't take it for granted. If anything, man, just the ideas, you know, to come out and exchange thoughts, whatever, dude, I really appreciate it. Again, with Josh bringing some fantastic points, I think some of the best points I've heard in like a long time. Um, so really, really appreciate that. Um, and just again, like I said, the opportunity to come out and talk with you boys. But guys, this is for you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Put in your next topic. We'll we'll talk about it. If you guys don't want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. No we'll entertain it for sure. Um, again, we're open to anything. So already, all right, Josh. What we got over there, Mike? Man, I just want to say, man, thanks everybody for giving us your time and your attention, and uh, thank Wizzo for having us yet again. It is always an honor to be on here with these gentlemen too share our perspectives with each other and truly listen to each other with not our, just our ears but our hearts as well and uh to get this information out to the public is always an honor and uh man i just can't wait till the next time man just make sure y'all uh, like share and subscribe with my man wizzo man already and i can't remember if you gave you out your uh links and everything earlier did you uh no, no i didn't yeah, yeah hit them up again because i always uh, want guys, you to do that can always check me out at uh, After Real Truth. Uh, it's all one word. You can Google it. You can see all my pictures and my artwork and my of my shirts and stuff like that. Um, you can check out uh, my podcast, Cosmic Currency Seven Seven Seven, on Spotify. And uh, don't forget to check out Wizzle Talk on Spotify too. Right, right, yeah. Wizzle Talk on Spotify. Also dropping a little bit on TikTok a yeah. little bit. You know, some of my little just my thoughts. <laughs> and things like that so yeah. guys it's always a pleasure to have you on the show always 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 you know i know i can count on you know josh at first mr slice and dice was kind of nervous about the very first time <laughs> now he's like a regular i can't get this motherfucker off the damn show but i want to he just like shit what's up what are we gonna talk about the next time he got more notes than i got over here and shit you know but that's what we do guys we come on here we have a little fun we break out some good points some good topics we all give our different points of views and uh you know we may not agree with one another all the time but at the end of the day of it like that we still cool you know everybody's entitled to their own opinion or whatever you know we pigtail on this pigtail on that but uh some valuable information that we put out and i want to thank everybody out there for watching wizzo talk thank you for listening thank you for watching always remember that it's free to like share and subscribe i appreciate your support to the fullest and i'm gonna get move my hand over here to the stop control and get ready to end this thing. This is Paul Wizzo. I'll let you boy. <laughs>